Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a closer look at the g-forces in RST2, in particular one type of g-force that this game does not calculate. A roller coaster has three different types of g-forces listed in the stats window. Positive g's describe the force that you experience when you're going through a vertical looping or when you reach the bottom of a drop and the track is leveling out. This force makes your body feel heavier than normal and it pushes you into the bottom of your seat. Negative vertical g's describe the exact opposite force, which happens when you crest the top of a hill or go very slowly through something like an inline twist. This force pushes you out of the seat into the restraints and this experience is called airtime because it feels like you're hovering in the air. Lastly, there are lateral g's, which is the force that pushes you to the side of the car when you're going through a turn. There is one extra force that you experience in roller coasters that does not exist in this game, and that is the longitudinal g-force. When a launched train accelerates, you get pushed into the back of your seat, and when a train breaks, you get pulled away from the back of your seat. These forces are the longitudinal g-forces. In this video, we're going to calculate what the longitudinal g-forces are on a variety of elements in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Let's first take a look at the LIM launched coaster. If we test the ride, we can already see a major difference between the game and real life. Real launched roller coasters take a few seconds to get up to speed and need quite a large stretch of track to do that. This roller coaster in the game gets up to its top speed before the last car of the train has even left the station, so the g-forces will probably be incredibly high. This immediately creates an issue. When the train hasn't left the station yet, we cannot see the speed of the train because it still says departing station. So we cannot see when the train has reached its top speed. There is a way around this and that is to make the goal speed higher than it can achieve before it has left the station. This way we can see the speed that it reaches when it has fully departed the station and if we time how long it took to do that we can calculate the g-force. For more precision we will take a very high goal speed and a very long train. We assume here that the acceleration is constant during the entire launch. To reduce the measuring error, I will measure the launch in slow motion and later adjust for that. This train is 20 cars long and the goal speed of the launch is 922 km per hour. When we test it, we see that the train reaches 864 km per hour. When I reduce the clip so that it starts on the last frame that the train is still stationary and ends on the first frame that it says traveling at 864 km per hour, we get a duration of 3.48 seconds. The game was slowed down by a factor of 10, so this actually only took 0.348 seconds. To calculate the g-force, we first have to convert the speed from kilometers per hour to meters per second, which we do by dividing by 3.6. This gives us a speed of 240 meters per second. When we divide this by the duration, we get the acceleration, which is 689.7 meters per second per second. To get the g-force, we need to divide this number by the standard acceleration due to gravity, which on Earth is on average 9.81 meters per second. This means that during the launch of an LIM coaster in RCT2, you experience a staggering 70.3 Gs. This is very deadly. For comparison, the coaster with the fastest launch in real life is Dododonpa in Fuji-Q Highland in Japan. It accelerates from 0 to 180 km per hour in 1.56 seconds, which results in a g-force of 3.3. The highest vertical g-force on a roller coaster is the Tower of Terror in Gold Reef City in South Africa with 6.3 g's. It's safe to say that no one that rides a launch roller coaster in RCT2 would live to tell the tale. Let's now take a look at the brakes. They're nowhere near as strong as a launch, but they're still not very comfortable. To calculate this, we will let the same train that was launched to 864 km per hour slow down to just 3 km per hour with a very long brake section and see how long it takes. Since this takes several seconds instead of just a few tenths, we won't need to slow the game down for this. To determine how long this brake run takes, we will start measuring on the first frame that the entire train is on the brake section 
and end measuring on the first frame that the train traveled at 3 km per hour. This gives us a duration of 2.65 seconds to slow down from 836 km per hour to 3 km per hour, which is a speed difference of 833 km per hour. Now we can do the same mathematical operations as we did with the launch to calculate the g-forces. The result is a g-force of 8.9. This isn't necessarily deadly, but a lot of people will black out and sustain serious injuries from the restraints cutting and smashing into their bodies. They will also probably get a concussion because their brain smashes into the front of their skull. Lastly, we arrive at what I think are the highest g-forces in the entire game. The vertical drop coaster has an element called the holding brake for drop, and it holds a train for a few seconds before it lets it go down the drop. This brake has infinite power, it will stop any train no matter how fast it's going and it only takes a single frame for a train to be stopped. So let's do some math on this. I record my videos at 60 frames per second, so for now we will assume that the train takes 1 60th of a second to come to a stop. If a train travels at 10 km per hour, which it might do right after a chain lift, the g-force is already 17 about twice as high as that of the brake run. If the train travels at 100 km per hour, which is 10 times as fast, the g-forces are also 10 times as high. This means that we've already reached 170 g's, over twice that of the launch. This is super deadly already, but we've only just gotten started. The highest speed that I can make a train travel at with cheats is about 1570 km per hour. If a train going this quickly slows down to 0 km per hour in only a 60th of a second, the guests that are in the train experience an astonishing 2667 Gs. This is not just deadly, this is all destroying. If you weigh 80 kilograms, your body will for a very short moment weigh more than 210 metric tons, which is more than the weight of a Boeing 747. These g-forces are incredibly high, but we're still not done. If I slow the game down by a factor 100, the trains will still stop in a single frame. So then the g-forces would not be 2667, but rather 266,734. The weight of that gas that weighs 80 kilograms would now be about 21,300 metric tons, which is more than twice the weight of the Eiffel Tower. I don't think humanity has invented a material strong enough to hold a coaster train filled with guests that all weigh as much as the Eiffel Tower, so doing this is probably not a good idea. We could go on and slow the game down even more, but I think you get the point. So, in conclusion, if you have a brake section on your coaster, you will be injuring all of your guests, but they'll mostly be fine. If you have a launched coaster, you will kill more than 99% of your guests, if not all, that get on the ride. And if you have a vertical drop coaster with a holding brake for drop, you're breaking the laws of physics because the train stops infinitely fast and that requires an infinite amount of energy. I hope you enjoyed exploring the uncalculated g-forces of this game and now forever feel terrible about subjecting your guests to these deadly forces. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.